हेलो संजीव कैन वी स्टार्ट दिस सेशन Good evening, everybody. Myself, Rishab, and on behalf of Cyber for All community, I welcome you all. Before starting today's session, I would like to give a brief regarding our Cyber for All community. Cyber for All is a cyber security concerned community focusing and marching towards creation of a safe and secure cyberspace era. Our mission is to keep community up to date with all around happening in the cyber world. Within Cyber for All community, there are so many. cyber experts professionals and independent security analysts who are actively engaged within our community and their primarily goal is focusing on cyber security cyber crime and other major data breaches and hacks they also cover daily cyber security news hacking news technology updates and various security and ethical hacking tutorials our team of experts and security enthusiasts provides regularly security awareness and training solution to everyone who want to improve their security awareness in today's digital world talking about this week's weekly charcha today we are having amazing topic that is getting started with threat hunting and our speaker for today's session is parth jamodkar who is an active threat and researcher and his area of interest are threat intelligence and teaming and malware analysis so without wasting any more time i would like to call our today's speaker Hello, Parth. Once again, welcome here, and you can proceed this session. Over to you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rishab, for the introduction. All right, guys. So today's topic and session will be about threat hunting, introduction to threat hunting, how we can dive into threat hunting, and uh, what are the aspects we we should have while doing the threat hunting. And also, we're we'll talking about threat intelligence. and little bit about the rape taming and abusing active directory with exploitation kind of little bit stuffs as a well. and another one of my favorite topic we will be talking about is creating a signatures or creating a yar rules or uh, traps or etc as a called as sigma rules as well so we doing that as well so let me know once you can see my screen and uh, Okay, so let me know once you can see my screen. Okay, right, I think my screen is visible. Yes, it's visible. All right, so. so the i will be sharing this slide once uh, once our session is done and uh, so to be today's topic as i told dive into the threat hunting so before that uh, just who am i so i am a incident responder and red team for my past organization it was almost like 2 years and later on as a blue team for now as a 2 years into the microsoft project as a threat hunter through the mind tree. so i have a knowledge uh, so my cyber security expertise are into the network pen testing vulnerability assessment and then web application security testing uh, threat intelligence gathering malware analysis and threat hunting etc so to the next so today's agenda will be on into the introduction of threat hunting sigma yar rules in threat hunting and later later on later moment to exploitation and then uh which is a very interesting one that is a q and a so i i will be i will be answering all the questions and i will be happy to answer whatever the questions are coming to the youtube or through the into the chat box if you got any question just type and just drop it on the chat box and later on i can help with that so next slide is what is threat hunting so of course uh, some of you guys maybe from the threat hunting field so and uh, some are just getting into the threat hunting or just wanted to get into threat hunting so what should be the expect or what should be the approach and etc 
So we'll be talking about that. So what is threat hunting? So threat hunting, as per my knowledge, is something like creating a hypothesis. So so before the before the hypothesis, so exactly from where this threat hunting comes into the rule and why it is important. So that is very important, right? Because in most of the big organizations like uh, Facebook, check in any of the organization like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Mindtree, take any big organization, big five companies, even though have even though they have saw they have compliance, they have security products, they have EDR, they have antiviruses, they have cured us. Splunk, etc., same tools and all, but still, why they approach, why they want threat hunters to look into their organization, protect them on a proactive approach. So that is where, as a threat hunters, we come into the role. So when you talk about threat hunting, it is something like a mixture of machine learning, mixture of automation and human mind, because if you see the attackers are so vigilant in their attack. Uh, like uh, uh, the recent examples, SolarWin attack. So they, they, the SolarWin attack was almost when for 11 months, it, they tested the code into the into the SolarWin later on, they removed the test code, they created an update, and then that update was been, uh, sent to all of the organization as a dependencies, and then that, then that one DLL one key as attack came so if you see that the dual timing so dual timing is something like and how much time they took to exfiltrate that data exfiltrate whatever the data they got from that organization how much time they took to get in to get out of the get out of that organization and how much time we took to detect that activity so that is a dual timing concept so if you see SolarWind took 11 months, Action Server took uh, less than 11, and then the Kiasa attack just took seven days to exfiltrate. So if you if you see this timeline, it is so vigilant and they are getting so uh, proactive in their work and uh, they just want the work, get the work done. So as a threat hunters, we, have, we are the one who want to protect such organization, not an EDR team, not a SOC team, not an they can't protect. We are the one who protects because the reason is we are the com we are the combination of machine learnings and human mind. So machine learning will something like all the data will be created, all the data will be collected, summarized in one of the centralized Docker environment or one of the centralized Sentinel environment. And then from that environment, we will we'll be pulling out exact whatever the data we need. And then we'll be creating our hypothesis on it like uh, uh, if something triggered, if something malicious, like let's say one of the example, uh, exe file, take it xyz exe file, and that exe file was been executed into the into the document folder, and then that from the document folder it has been trying to uh, get an outbound connection to one of the China's or one of the Chinese server. And then again, there is something malicious going on through the PowerShell script or CMD. So why this is all happening? So how we will come to know that this in this machine something is happening and something like that. So and, and on that part on that particular time, machine learning comes into the role. So where machine learning will be something like an agent will be monitoring all this stuff, and then he, he will be sending that all the data to our one centralized platform and then as a threat hunter we are getting the alerts or we are getting the hits of the attack or hits of the malicious behavior strange anomalous or uh, unknown behavior and then we are getting into that particular table or we are getting into that particular data and put, and trying to do the root cause analysis of it so this is this is what the threat ending is so if you see uh, the so into into this uh, diagram, which is an attacker as a human adaption as a human interface, and then there's a machine interface. So what comes into the machine interface is like a data collection, which I talked about. Summarizations: so all the data will be summarized in one on one centralized uh, on one centralized environment, and then there will pattern matching. So, like uh, 
let's say the brute force login all right so one ip address that was there he was trying to brute force on one of the user account for like in 10 to 5 10 to 15 times on a of course attackers are a little bit tricky so they will be doing something like they will be setting a time time sleep of five minutes or 10 minutes so after 10 minutes again one attack will be tried one pattern will be tried again it will be sleeping for 10 minutes and then again it will be tried so it is a they have created one pattern but as a threat hunters we also had one pattern of it to understanding this kind of attacks so pattern matching and then generalization and hypothesis testing and as a, on the other side of human interface intuitions intuitions something like thinking i expect to that particular activity is something called an intuition then context ethics what kind of ethics we got creativity and then as as a strategy that all this all this in, intuitions i did context i got ethics i have did and then creativity or the project so how i can create one strategy for the next attack that if something happens next time i will not take that much time which i took in this scenario so this is called this is the way of human interface and machine learning and then these both comes together so they can definitely be used to protect such organizations uh, from the real world attackers as a which are so the hypothesis which is uh, creating a hypothesis in our minds so why this happened and if this happened so what is going to happen next so something like if cmd was been executed why the cmd was executed so in this way if you if as a threat hunter we should have for every single alert for every single incident or for every single uh tokens or tickets we should have that kind of hypothesis so why this trigger so first question will be that and when this trigger second will be that and who and who is triggering that that will be the fourth, third question so in this way we can get the root cause analysis of that particular attack and it will be like in generating the whole hypothesis in our mind and then putting that into a document and then that document will be like can share to our customer or as a next uh, as a next uh, incident it will be used as a strategy for the uh, so if something like this happens if this time so what i want to do for the next time how i can mitigate this kind of stuff very easily without doing all of this analysis and so that is called hypothesis later on collect and process intelligence data so which is like the collecting the data exactly particular data which i wanted to know or which will be helping me to get that particular data uh, to get that particular context of it context of the attack so it is called as collect and process the intelligence and data so next is the trigger so why what i when I, when we talk about trigger so trigger is something like uh, uh, where signatures or rules comes into role, where rules like an uh, sigma rules or yara rules will be coming into the role. So we'll be talking about these rules and all later on, after some time, uh, into the coming slides. So trigger is something like whenever something bad will happen, something will trigger, and that and we'll be coming, we'll be getting that as a notification in our dashboard or something like that. So that is called a trigger, and it is. Uh, triggers are something should be like a proactive so moment it got moment it got uh, attack moment it got uh, triggered in a, the in the machine as a malware or something we should have a one trigger or one notification for it on the same time or something on a period of time so that is called a trigger later on as an investigation so what is what so as a finding of the root cause analysis or what kind of attack from where it started etc etc so that is called investigation and later on is the response resolution so what is the resolution for that attack was it a real attack was it red team activity or was it just a legitimate activity or it was an admin activity so in this way we have so this is what thread ending is and which will be helping the organization to stop the dwell timing and stop the attackers before they do the exfiltration so main reason of threat hunters or main purpose of the threat, inter threat hunter is to stop the exfiltration of data so as you guys know what is the exfiltration right 
So exfiltration is something like uh, uh, whatever the data we got, we, uh, the, that data will be shared or been transferred to the attacker server as exfiltration, right? So that is the main approach one attacker should have that, all right, the attack, all right, the attacker is already in the machine. It's all right. He is doing some malicious activity. It's all right. But he shouldn't be he shouldn't be doing the exfiltration. So that is where we need to stop before they do the exfiltration. So it is really interesting when it comes when you get such when you get such scenarios and you are stopping one of the exfiltration attack and then it is something like you are protecting one of the good one of the organization and you are behind that because one exfiltration can literally cause whole system whole organization down if you see the uh, colonial pipe attack so exfiltration and then ransomware activity just uh, closed whole uh, bigger uh, bigger uh, colonial pipe which is almost uh, uh, recovering the whole oils and our oils and gas for the us so that's it so the next so this slide is all about uh, signature sigma and These are the things, these are the some signatures and helping them to detect such kind of malicious activities before it get worse, something like that. So if you see the YAR rules are a way of identifying malware or other files by creating rules that look for certain characteristics. It looks for certain characteristics. What are character characteristics here? We'll be discussing in the next slide. Uh, so Yara is a tool that can be used to identify files and meet certain conditions. So it is, uh, we'll be talking into the next slide. So, and then there is Sigma. Sigma is a generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant log events in straightforward manner. So both are similar just have the language difference just like java c c++ have kind of like difference so it's just something like that but uh, the approach of the sigma rules yara rules or watch list or uh, splunk queries are something similar to the sigma and yara so just uh, this difference of language so these both are being used to find the behavior to do the behavior hunting aka hunt of anomaly so if you want if you guys understand so behavior hunting is something like uh, not as a so antivirus if you see it works on a detection well, works on a predefined signatures uh, created or updated into the antivirus database but when it comes to behavior hunting it is live hunting where we are monitoring the live hunt live behavior of that particular exe file or that particular user or take it anything, doc file, exe, bash file, script, bbs script, etc. etc. So we are working on a behavior of unknown behavior that in, in our machine, how things are working, how things are, uh, is it everything legit or something awkward, something weird or strange is going on in our machine. And so that is what we are hunting in our, in our corporate organizations and uh, like that. So next is something about uh, so as I told the we will talk, we'll be looking into the sigma rules so some sigma rules I have gathered uh, so there are thousand ten thousands of sigma rules and traps and Yara rules and uh, researchers threat researchers are creating new signatures new traps new rules uh, every day and whenever the zero attack comes or new malware variants comes and to put into the threat hunting module or detection of the EDR, AV, etc. So if you see so AV or Yara rule, Sigma rule, something looks like this. So this is a Sigma rules, not in Yara. So if you see, so one of the I carried out, taken out is cop, that title is copying sensitive files with a credential data. So if you see the name, copying sensitive file with the credential data. So description is file with well-known file names, copying, and then it comes into the credential axis and what should be the, how should be the pattern? So pattern will be something like this. So it comes in the category, which is a process creation and 
product will be windows detection will be selection one ends with tcxe and then command line will be bss slash m slash y and then command line contains windows ntds ntds.date config sam config security or repair system or so we are so as you if you see uh, into this so vr rules are a way of identifying malware or other files by creating rules that looks for a certain characteristic so we are looking into certain characteristic and the certain conditions to meet that particular file so when this condition will will meet to one of the exe file one of the behavior automatically that that this will trigger so this this uh, yara rule or this trap will be triggering on our dashboard as a hey there was credential access going on with this particular title i will look on this so the thread hunter as i will be getting into that token or getting into that incident or getting into that uh, uh, ticket and then i will be doing the root cause analysis from where it started so who initiated this command line and finding out is there any other machines getting infected by this attack or is there any other machine or which is the user who has been compromised and if this user is compromised was there exfiltration or was the lateral movement so this kind of questions creates an hypothesis and this kind of it will help us understanding the attack and it will help us understanding the next step or create a report for the customer on this basis if we create a hypothesis okay when it comes to thread enter hypothesis is very important and intuitions is the most important thing to follow your instincts what you feel like if you feel like it is malicious just go ahead. if you are a sock analyst uh, uh having this uh, session and all so if you uh if you think it is something malicious if you think something is not good or legitimate just go ahead and follow your instincts so that's what it's it's better to uh, go with the uh, uh, better to follow instincts uh, not to get in the fp or something like that because your one mistake can just cause an huge uh, catastrophic effect to the uh, particular organization or your organization so another rule set uh, which is a shadow copies deletion using operating system utilities so if you know shadow copies when we talk about shadow copies there is always ransomware activity because uh when the ransomware activity happens it go, attacker goes for the shadow copies deletion so that organization could not recover the shadow copies of it and then they can encrypt the data on a larger basis so this is one of the rule set it looks like something like this so attack is equals to defensive agent and then selection one will be powershell.exe wmic.exe so why i used this powershell wmic is because this kind of activity can be triggered through powershell.exe or through wmic so if you know what is wmic it is one of the wmi utility uh, which can be used to do the lateral movement from one machine to another machine remotely and then when we talk about powershell of course it is a powershell module so with the help of PowerShell, we can do so many stuff if we have a PowerShell version 2 and version of other than the versions. And then there is vssadmin.exe and this shadow.exe. So these are the main, uh, whenever we go for the shadow copy uh, execution or deletion or recovery as an admin activity or as a malicious activity, this kind, this exes will be coming into the role, will be coming into the command line of your activity. So as a selection, I view, uh, they have used as a PowerShell, WMIC, VSS admin, disk shadow, and then command line contains all as a shadow delete uh, WDM admin.exe. And then command line can also contains delete and quit. So once it will be deleted, and then we will definitely go for the quit kind of activity. So if he's just doing a record, still he's going to uh, use the command like a quit. So it is something like this. So we are 
we are as a sigma rules as a threat hunters we are more into the finding out the behavior of that attack behavior of that new attack so new ttps and then critical sigma rules on that purpose of course this may create an false positive in the all but you have to deal with the uh, bad consequences as well uh, so there are some of the alerts or there are some of the uh, sigma rules which may create false positive activities but we have to deal with it when it comes to threat hunting and all so the next slide is abusing active directory so there are so many sigma rules but i don't want to uh, get in all sigma rules because uh, there was so if you guys need my help in understanding sigma rules or creating new one because i am creating one of it so if you guys need help or if you guys need to uh, contribute or collaborate with me or in the help me so definitely i will be uh, i will be happy to help you and i'm happy if you're gonna help me so on that so the next one is abusing active directory by PowerShell. so again in when it comes to active directory is one of my favorite topic and there are so many stuff in active directory and it's still people are recovering the uh, way to exploit the uh, active directory abusing the active directory on on different aspect on different variations different patterns etc so we'll be working through the we'll be abusing active directory through the powershell so if you know the powershell is one of the uh, command line utility into the window which can be used uh, which can be used by that by the admin on a large aspect for doing uh, remote access or doing the uh, ulc kind of activity so, so the one of the first uh, abuse i can say is domain privilege escalation so kerberos uh, so one of the kerberos is there then kerberos thing is to harvest tgs ticket so if you want to understand the domain privilege escalation uh, you need to understand the tgs so what is ticket granting service for uh, and tgt and then uh, HTTP, which is a hash the hash the pass and etc. So I'm not gonna get so deeper into it because it is a vast topic. So I'm just gonna get into the glimpse of it. So Kerberosing is to harvest the TGS ticket for services that runs on behalf of user account in Active Directory. So if I get this TGS TGS ticket of one of the user, so on on that on behalf on the user's behalf, I can I can work as a means. I can use services. So what can be the command line for it? It will be get ad user stash filter and then service principal name, which is SPN, and then and then the properties of service principal name. So if attacker as a as a attacker perspective, I'm gonna use this PowerShell command line in my uh, in my PowerShell. So I will be getting the TGS through if I'm gonna use the dash property service principal name. So I'm gonna get the whole data of that of that particular user that he is a USC or he is a, what kind of activity he have what kind of permissions he got and then the TGS of it so this is one of the way uh, domain privilege escalation can be happen to get this TGS so as a threat hunters we can create a traps for on this command line so something like if this command line triggers with some other expect like unknown share value or strange unsigned exe has been has been doing this activity one alert will trigger for domain privilege escalation so this is something like we have to uh, get such kind of filters which can be used by attackers for doing lateral movement or doing the privilege escalation on an on an organization's machines so the next one is abusing shadow copies. So again, shadow copies we are talking about. Uh, so if you have a local administrator's access on a machine, as I am talking about local administrator uh, with no with no much US US uh, permissions. So if you have local administrator access on a machine, try to list the shadow copies. It's an easy way to domain escalation. So I'm so this is more into the how I can do the escalation. So before escalation, I need some of the reconnaissance on it. I need reconnaissance on the domain controller, on that machine or something like that. If I have 
particular information about it. So definitely I can go for the escalation, whatever the uh, things I need later on for the escalation. So, so this is something, uh, so this partial command line can be used for getting such a, uh, for getting, for it can be used for abusing the shadow copies. So dash VSS admin list shadow. So this is one of the command line. Uh, if I'm going to uh, enter into the partial module, so I'm going to get the, all the list of the shadows into that particular machine. I don't need uh, administrative privileges for that. So it can be done using the PowerShell or WMI or something like that. So next is unconstrained delegation attack. So which is a pretty much good topic. Uh, I want if you guys want to uh, read or if you guys want to, if you guys are from the stock or someone, so you guys can just read about this unconstrained delegation attack. And I'm pretty sure uh, you guys couldn't have this as a alert or as a rule in your sock or someone uh, something so you can just create one i have uh, so i've always been working for this on the past months and i've created one uh, i have created one rule for it so definitely you can have a look on this one because it is a new one and uh, you can get uh, uh, which is which is worst powerful so we have an administrative access on a machine that has a constraint delegation enabled we can wait for a high value target or da to connect to it still it still is tgt then ptt and impersonate it so here it is something like uh, unconstrained delegation is something like if you compromise one account if you compromise one server with with an administrative privileges you can literally and if that server have an unconstrained delegation is unable then you can literally get you can literally compromise the domain controller of it domain so have a look on it and uh, you guys can understand that so discover so how we can discover it so what attacker can use the command line for this uh, to abuse the delegation attack is something is very simple it's not something like attacker needs to do so much stuff on so much stuff to abuse the constraint delegation or active directory this they just need to use the normal admin commands for doing the malicious activity which is like a, a dash git, uh, dash net, computer, and dash unconstrained. So this will give him an idea. So, okay, fine. This server have a delegation is enabled. So definitely, I can do the. Uh, I can just dump. I can just dump uh, mimic app through the mimic app. I can just dump the TGT, and then I can just uh, give this TGT to my any of the domain controller, and then this domain controller will give me access. Then this domain controller will save my tgt into his domain controller and then he will create one service for my tgt and then whenever i want from this machine i can connect to any of the machine which that domain controller have access by impersonating that hey i am a domain controller so it is so interesting attack you guys can just search on it and uh, well, it will be like fun and then there's dns admin abuse if a user is a machine of the dns admin group that he can possibly load an arbitrary DLL with, an, with the privilege of DNS.exe that runs as a system. The exploitation process needs privileges to restart the DNS service. So it is more like an uh, doing the arbitrary code execution uh, into the DNS admin group through the DNS.exe. So the command line or the enumeration could be something. So how this attack will work is something like this. So first of all, attacker needs to enumerate the members. So how many members are there? Let me, let me just try that out first. So it will be like dash get uh, ad group member and then dash identi uh, identi identify so it is and then DNS admins. So he will be getting the list of the members who have who are the DNS admins and the what kind of group they got. And then compromise it while Mimikad's getting the. Uh, so if you guys know what is Mimikad, is something like a tool for credential dumping. So with the help of Seculus or uh, uh, different modules in Mimikad's, you can just dump. So we need to dump the uh, uh, credentials from this kind, this users, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna create one of the malicious DLL, and then I will be sharing that to the SMB share and configuring the, that DLL to particular command line. 
So it will be like uh, through the SMB port, I'm going to create uh, the TGT and then I'm going to share it to the particular path on to the multiple machines. So we just call it DNS admin abuse. Then there is another one which is TSRM abuse is, is pretty much uh, uh, like an having a hardcore password by the to the attacker giving the hardcore password to the attacker so dsrm is uh, is also one of the good topic which is like every dc has local administrator account this account has dsrm password which is a safe back backup password we can get this and the pth is an ntlm hash to get the local answer to the access dc so dsrm is something like you will not get the dsrm password whenever you want because it is a hard coded if something goes wrong in your active directory then you can use this DSRM password to get into your Active Directory. So what if attacker go get this DSRM password? So we can create one rule for that one as well. So how we can do is invoke. So if you see the dump DSRM password needs DA privileges. So with the help of Mimikatz, I can dump the dump the DSRM and later on I can use. So I need to get into one of the registry. So which is uh, uh, HKLM system current control set control LSA, which is local security authority. And then there is one uh, module called DSRM admin log on behavior. So I just need to, so I take her or as a red team, I just need to change the value is equals to two. So by default it is zero uh, or by default uh, it is, yeah, by default it is zero. So if I need to do the DSRM privileges if i want to abuse the dsm what i need to do is just change the value to two and i will get the persistence into the dsi persistence into the active directory so for attacker once he gets into the system and if there are no threat hunters if there are no avs or if even if there are avs attackers can definitely bypass it and uh, he can he don't even need much of the strength or much of the knowledge of it and etc he just need to have a basic and he can just uh, the, use it uh, for the uh, abusing the active directory by simple command lines and all so if the property already exists he just need to change the values equals to two and then the references are so i think this is the end to the abusing the active directory through the PowerShell. And then the reference is are this is the sigma rules. So there are multiple sigma rules down in this uh, reference. So I can I'll be sharing this into the slide, and you can have it. And then there is one of the cheat of Active Directory exploitation. Uh, you can have a look on it, and uh, which will be helpful to you in creating your defenses strong. Or if you're a red team or a pen tester, you can use these cheats for doing the pen testing in your network or in your organization and then there is a thank you which is an so any questions here so this is uh, a number if you need you can contact me for as i told you i'm i'm very much interested in creating the rules and all as a new i'm i'm doing one so if you guys need my help uh, definitely you can contact me on my email or my contact number I'll be sharing that in my in the chat box for sure. And then we have a Q and A as a, as we said. So, any questions you got, guys? Sanju, do you have any questions on the chat box, or anyone have any question? Just unmute yourself and. Uh, yeah, I have sent some questions in the chat. All right. Hello, Chirak. Hello. Yep. Yeah, like I was asking about like uh, does ransomware attack also come in like threat hunting or what? Like if there is some ransomware attack in a company. Mm. Uh, of course, yes. Answer is yes. Uh, in a so ransomware attack is something like uh, the last uh, last job of the attackers uh, i believe so definitely it comes into the threat hunting where as a threat hunters we need to uh, stop the ransomware attack on initial phase because 
when there when there is a hints of ransomware attack definitely there will be the wm activities or lateral movement activities that multiple machines are getting remote access and multiple something are being dropped on multiple machines through the remote uh, through the remote access like yeah. through the wmi or rdp or through the smb so definitely it is an uh, uh, it comes into the threat uh, threat hunting and we need to stop it on a initial phase before that attacker do the exfiltration so like uh, how is like threat hunting dif different from like forensic investigation because if there is a ransom attack then like uh, we have like forensic team working on that and removing that so maybe like there are some similarities yeah i got your point so uh, when we talk about the forensic team so forensic team uh, as per my approach as per my knowledge and approach forensic team comes later after the ransomware attack happens and system has been breached and now the organization has been exposed to ransomware activity ransomware so that time forensic investigation people come and they do the digital forensic for the machines and to get the artifacts that which ransomware had and uh, which ransomware was got hit how many machines can get compromised etc etc so it it has been done later after the ransomware attack and threat hunting okay. in, into the threat hunting we are doing as a proactive hunting and we're stopping that ransomware attack before it does and data breach or before it encrypts the file okay. so threat hunting comes under uh, like red teaming uh no uh threat teaming is something different uh where they be as a they be a real attackers and then they try to get into us organization with the help of SOW which has been signed and then they do the stealth hacking or stealth attacking to the machines bypassing the EDR bypassing the SOC team etc bypassing the proactive threat hunters if this organization got and then they red team must create a POC and then they create a reports and sending out to the organization particularly. So uh, not into the threat hunting because threat hunters are threat hunters are something like in blue teamers or purple teamers. Purple teamers, that's uh, Probably I can say purple team or purple team because uh, as a, I feel like I'm a purple team because uh, I'm more into the creating a traps. I'm more into do the red teaming through the multiple different techniques and then creating a traps as a blue team. So I can say, uh yeah. hunters can come in a perfect thing, perfect thing. because blue team comes as a sock because they are more into the defensive mode not on a attack because they don't create a signature but they don't create a rule they monitor the through the scene through the uh different logs coming from the splunk checkpoint etc that's it but as a threat hunters they create they understand the ttps tactics techniques and pre, uh, procedure and then they create a year rule they create a rules they try that on the lab environment then they create a rules implement on the organization and then again they become a blue team as a to prod to monitor such kind of activities yes yes uh, also i have an, another question like when you were telling about sigma rule like we were making the sigma rules so in that like uh, i was thinking like there was a parameter which was missing was severity like uh, you were severity so like you didn't mention like uh, like the incident is severe like which incident is severe so like if we are monitoring then we will won't be able to monitor like if there is some high priority activity going on so like how we will monitor it so the, that was the doubt so your question is like uh, uh, can you uh uh just rephrase your question in a yeah yeah like uh if there is something like uh high priority based activity going on so like how we will filter it using our sigma rule exactly wow that is a good question so uh so for whenever we create a sigma rules uh, or whenever we create a traps or rules or signatures we gave them as a priority now if i'm going to talk about shadow copies definitely i'm going to go with a p0 right yes so if I'm, if it is a P0, definitely it will be like, oh, wait a second, let me, I'm going to do, I'm going to work on P1, PA1, P1 later on. Let me just work on a P0 category first. So in okay. this way, we can bifurcate on our dashboard or on our monitor that 
which yeah activity. but in your ppt like uh, there was nothing mentioned on it so oh that, yes that was just an like an i i created one for a as a sample base but uh, it is uh, the sigma rule doesn't look that similar to which i have given it is just okay. a sample where i wanted to under, make you guys understand about the what kind of char characteristics we look into but there are so many aspects in sigma rules or yara rules so many operators we use contains all uh, not contain and or has etc there are so many operators so uh, like that so it was just a basic example of it yeah yeah thank you this right. answers my question thank you any other questions so what are the most important mitigation steps approach on how can we hunt for those fileless malware usually requires almost no disk touching yeah so when we uh, talk about the fileless malware we lolbins comes from the road, land of livings where uh, malware is been not malware is not getting executed into the uh, local storage or local system kind of like B, E or something like that. So they are being executed into the memory as an allocation. So at that time, what kind of, what kind of, what can be the monitoring purpose or uh, what could be the uh, monitoring expect to that particular incidents is something like uh, understanding the event properties, event properties, or it, uh, I, we call it as a, even properties of that particular command line which is being executed through that download option so if we understand the virtual lock and virtual memory lock which is into that because when we when we talk about the fileless malware so they are being executed in some of the another process like uh, let's say for the example as we see uh, it's um, uh, cake.exe right i'm attempting the random name cake.exe is there then that this cake.exe is something like a fileless manual which needs to be executed into the memory of memory allocation right so he needs to be executed into the memory so he will be doing the kind of like processing injection into some of svc host.exe so even if the edr even if the edr got and hates that hey this cake.exe i don't feel like this cake.exe is something uh something legitimate so of course, EDR will be uh, quarantined or re uh, removing it, but already the process injection as a fileless malware here have already been executed into the one of the SVC host.exe, which is into the running in a memory allocation of it. So we can create a process injection related um, rule sets. So that can help us monitoring such kind of activities. So you, you can get that into the the list i have given into the into the reference of the slides which you call it as a null lens any other questions thank you part jamakkar participants are requested to fill up the mentioned feedback form so that we can do much better in the next time and they can also request for the topics for the upcoming session over to you sanjeev Hello guys. So if anyone else is having any questions or doubts, they can put their questions in the chat box. So I think there are some questions from Chirag, I guess. Uh, does answer, okay, yeah, Chirag already asked. So yes, yep. yes. All right. All right, guys. Then, any uh, if no other questions. Hello. 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 Yes, Ramesh. Yeah, Ramesh Kumar here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you we do the thread hunting, we need to know uh, Yara rules or any other tools like that. We uh, for thread hunting. Uh, or starting thread hunting. Um, how to we start the first first thing? Uh, okay, so Ramesh. Uh, so there are multiple aspects when we start the threat hunting. So uh, I can't give much brief about you on this call. So maybe I'm so I'm just giving my WhatsApp number. 
or LinkedIn profile, you can just connect me and I can, because there are different aspects. So in which way you need to create a threat hunting modules? Do you want to create a threat hunting modules using UBA, which is a user, uh, user endpoint behavior and something. So which is one of the good uh, approach into if we integrate UEBA in a, in a threat hunting model. But people, some people have told you that we will do the firewall threat hunting, but firewall device we will do threat hunting and we will do the ideas, uh, they will do threat hunting, that, um, that malware analysis, crowd strike, they will do the threat hunting like that. It is like that or whatever we do in that, in the command line we do that threat hunting everything. Uh, end, end user based we will do or network device based we will do. Uh, your voice was breaking, Ramesh. Can you please repeat uh, the last uh, last line? Yeah. yeah, we will do that end host machine uh, like that. We will do the thread hunting, the command light, or we will do that uh, logs for inter thread hunting. How do we do uh, So this can be done on larger aspect, like not only just on command line or something. So it can be done on uh, IOCs, IP addresses, and and created process or something on a larger log events or etc log on ids or event logs on on the sysmon through the sysmon and all so a sysmon will sysmon is one of the best way we can do the threat hunting and then you can use the sysmon logs to integrate with the event tags which which is one of the tool and then you can do your threat hunting on a particular agent or particular endpoint system if you want as a personal uh, personal research or on a larger aspect as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So any other questions? Yes, I had a question. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah so as you told like you work on writing traps so like what is the approach or measures you take for the same like writing traps like if we want to begin with trap writing so where shall we start with you rephrase the question uh so when when we talk about uh when i talk about creating a trap or creating signature on not only just for one of the organization but on a on a larger aspect, not only for the one organization, but it can be used, or I can uh, proceed that that particular new trap on a GitHub or something for helping all other organization as well. So it is more into you just need to gather the data, what you got, understanding the new techniques, read the reports, uh, new read the new reports of the 2021 malware. What what is the change between TrickBot from 2020 and what is the change between TrickBot in 2021? What are the mutexes created? So there are some of the, uh, I can give you the example or reference. It's, uh, just, uh, you can use multiple malware sharing uh, platforms and uh, virus total, uh, virus total enterprise edition for understanding the behavior of particular malware which has been which has been done in 2020 and which has been done in 2021. So understanding the difference between that techniques, what are the new techniques, and then you can create your own trap, or following up into the Discord channels, or getting the or having the your own lab set up, and then trying to understand the new aspect of how I can get into the Active Directory, or let's say that there is one PowerShell command my antivirus is there which has been detecting powershell.exe if anyone if any of the cmd or any of the exe file is there and he's been trying to execute the powershell.exe so which is the name called p-o-w-e-r-s-h-e-l right so what if i can reverse this powershell to the upside down to the river and still this powershell.exe is it executing so it is different expect how you think uh, on a different way so if you see uh if you use the p then double and uh double inverted comma plus double inverted comma then again o w e r in that way and then still if you will gonna execute 
the partial it will be partial dot exe will be executed but if you check into idr or on AV, av so it will not be detected because there is a uh, inverted command plus is into is been executed into that partial command line so find it out do the do your own hunt do your own uh, Use your own approach, create your own lab setup, Active Directory, Linux machine, Windows 10, Windows 7, Kali Linux, install the post exploitation framework in your lab environment, and then try multiple ways, install the Procmon, which is a process monitoring tool in your lab environment into the victim's machine. Then when you do some Metasploit attack on your Windows 10 machine, then with the help of, at the same time, through the events, through the event logs, understand what kind of command line has been executed on that particular aspect. So then check that command line is there in your trap or whatever the trap you got. Uh, then if it's not there, then try to modify that and say that, is it detecting now or not? If it's not detecting, then yeah, hooray, you got one trap. Or you got one command line, which has been totally obfuscated and uh, uh, AV, AV are getting bypasses for it. So it is, all your practice and how you work on that. So that's what I do when I create trap. I have a lab set up with the uh, Linux, Windows 10, 7, Active Directory, etc. Kind of like whole organization I have created in my lab and I do such kind of uh, manage, uh, practice on that to create a trap. So definitely it will give you unsuccessful or okay, fine. This is already there on GitHub, but you need to just keep trying and this will increase your knowledge or kind of like that. Did I answer your question? Um, yes, yeah, sure. It was insightful. All right. Any other questions? And definitely if you guys need help on any of the expert, you guys can connect me on LinkedIn or you can just search path and I, I, I will be there. So definitely you can connect me and I'll be happy to help. That's it. Any other questions? If no, Sanjeev? So I think that's it for today. And participants are, all the participants are requested to fill up the mansion feedback form. And once again, thank you, Perth, for such wonderful session. I'm sure participants must have learned so many things today. All right, sure. Thanks. Okay, so for now, we are ending today's sessions. Hope everyone have a great time. Bye for now. We will meet next time. Yeah, sure. Till then, happy third ending. All right. All right, guys. Happy hunting. Bye-bye.